Hello everyone, Pally Tub here, and welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. Our honor mode run for the absolute continues. And I would like to start this video off with an apology. I realized as I was editing the last episode that I lied to you. I know, can you believe it? I told you I was going to bring in our ogre friends for a fight in the previous episode, but I never did it. I ended up getting involved in this Joaquin's Rest nonsense, and I got derailed. This person has been repeating the same audio lines back to back to back to back while I stood here for 20 minutes getting ready for this episode and I need to take them down really fast just for my own sanity. They're also the only person here and they're stopping me from looting the entirety of this courtyard and building. Basically, they publicly shame me every time I try to go for anything. So we're going to try to take this person down. So far, it doesn't look like it's going great. I'm not going to lie to you. We missed a lot of stuff. Reckless attack with the Starion misses as well. The Flaming Fist goes for a trip attack on our Barbarian, hitting him for 13 damage. We're once again going to hit with our Sacred Flame to spawn another Radiating Orb above our target. I don't think we need to do too much of anything else. Lazel going over the normal swing hits for 11 damage. Dungan in the back fires off his shots and doesn't connect with anything. Maybe I was wrong. This person seems extremely difficult to hit, but a massive crit from our Starion gets us off on the right foot. So that's going to be one of our rests for the day immediately. But now I can loot all of this gold and get more loot when our vendors reset when we level up. We are approaching level five relatively quickly. I think the enemies over to my west are level five though. And we saw just how much damage one level four enemy could do to our party with a single swing. So very, very timidly, I am going to walk towards the west, towards the wooden bridge that overlooks the Githyanki meeting leaving the zone. Now we are not done with act one. We still have a lot more to do. Dragon Rider, my kin are near. Let's see. This is a tiefling. Let's see. Oh, there's the shadow. Let's see what she has to say. What are you doing? Hold up before they see you, Mark Gresham. Um, whatever you just called me, I don't like the sound of it. You're going to watch your tone around, Dungan. Got more important things to watch than my harassing tongue. Look. That lot are swarming all over the bridge. I don't know what they want, but it can't be good. I'm going to find another way around. You ought to do the same. You wouldn't know. A fight against them would go your way. Is, is she just here to warn me about how bad of an idea this, this is? Does this character ever show up anywhere else? I've only ever seen her here. And then eventually she just winds up leaving every time. Who are you? Nobody. Just another harassing fool trying to stay alive. That might just There's be true. There's plenty of us around. Yeah, that might be literally on the nose. This is a character made to warn you. Do you want to join me? What? Just follow you around? I go my own way. Alone. All right. Well, okay. That's now, it. I'm getting out of here. I'm going to turn base this because I know how this is going to go. We had Lazelle in our party last time. She, when she sees the Githyanki down here, she's all for it. She's like, oh, yeah, my boys, get me in on this. I'm trying to see what level they are. I can't tell from here. I think they are level five. Uh, however, I don't want Dungan just jumping right into this. So, Dungan's going to very slowly move to the side. We oh, are going to trigger the cutscene. To the ants before I do that, Istik. This is your, your last chance. No, look up. That was your last chance, Istik. Now burn. Stop wasting time, Beretha. You're not here to play with the locals. Of course, Kithrak. We merely sought to... No excuses. Question, kill, then move on. Find the weapon. Our queen watches us. Fail her at your peril. Kithrak Voss is a pretty handsome Githyanki, too. Would that I rode such a steed. 
A crash must be near. Come, my kin await. So there's no stopping Lazel here. She is going to run forward. I'm just going to say, let's go. That sounds like a great plan. Uh, now I have a very short amount of time to get ready while she charges forward. So uh, we're back to our preparation game. We're still in turn-based mode, which is why uh, we don't see her moving at the moment. Uh, so I am planning on uh, my approach. I think I have an idea for what I'm going to do. But you never know how these things actually plan out. Uh, Turn-based mode is off. I'm going to split my party. Oh, she's down there. I want to get my barbarian off of the high ground and down on the floor while these two stay up here. I think that's my plan for right now. Oh, so do I have to approach with a party member? Because that's definitely going to be a Starian. Yes, I do. We also just got so much XP. Such a familiar tone. Were I not merciful, I would slice the skin clean from your meat. Yet you are not bleeding, for I am nothing if not merciful. Wow. Your name, child. Lazel. Lazel. Proud. Regal, even. You will call me Gestil Kithrak. Vos, Knight Supreme, the Queen's Silver, the Queen's Sword. I am who you say. A geek vessel. So he's got has a big reputation. Sky, Lazel. Thieves aboard have taken a weapon most precious. Take word to your crash. You are to join our search. Speak up, child. Affirm your mandate. My mandate, just still Kithrak, is to locate this crash. I was infected aboard a geek ship and need to be purified. Your mandate is to aid me. Purified? Oh, Lazel. Why must the truth be so bitter? Soon your skin will go gray and your blood will run silver. You will shed your skin to become geek. Only in death are the infected cleansed. You will give us the weapon, then you will bend your head for the sword. Stand down, knight. I do not have what you seek. Our queen's word binds me. Beretha, see that her skull is split oh. and the tadpole crushed. Then examine her corpse. I will take word to the undying queen. To Danos, to the sky! Interesting. So normally you can, like dive into that conversation a little bit and talk about the artifact and hint that maybe you were at the crash, but none of that took place. She's infected and she's going to be killed and that's the end of it. Wow. Aggressive, very aggressive. Well, lays out surrounded by her kin, level five, level six, level five and level five. Four enemies versus R4. Well, the odds are not even, despite the numbers being even. So, Lazel will play Lumps Warhorn to start off combat. Beautiful. Where are they? Where are those handsome devils? Get in here. They're coming from the high road. Lovely. So we have four, or excuse me, three level four ogres also on our side. Will that be enough? to make this an even fight. Playing the horn did not consume an action of any kind, which I'm kind of surprised by, very surprised by. Lazelle is up first, and I think I'm just going to rush down one of the ranged attackers here if I can. We're gonna use one of our superiority die for a tripping attack on the raider next to us. That does make them go prone. So we're gonna use a very early action surge and with advantage, try to deal as much damage to that target as we can. Unfortunately, no more damage happened there. Astarian's gonna be in a bit of a bad spot, I think. Uh, so we are going to try to summon in yet more distractions for our would-be adventurers down on the ground. So in front of another melee combatant down there, this is Gish Fareth. I summon in our spiritual weapon for Shadowheart. That will consume our bonus action, but that will sit there and be another target for them to go after. Does that not count as my concentration? 
No, it doesn't. So we could theoretically summon in a flaming sphere here too, is that correct? This is a big fight to be making assumptions on, but I think I'm right. Uh, we're gonna summon in the sphere, bad camera angles here, I apologize. And it did work, look at that. We're gonna summon that in next to the other archer to hopefully make them threatened and make their shots a little bit harder to land. So as far as turn one goes, I think we're in a pretty good spot to start things off. Let's go ahead and end our turns and just see how bad this goes. We are gonna see one of the archers move away from the flaming spheres and shire off, fire off a shot at Astarian that knocks him prone on the ground. Another shot that then does so much damage, he's almost dead on turn one of this encounter. We see a trip attack being used on Lazelle that brings her down to her feet and a ton of damage following up from once again, just a single attack. Then on the high ground, rallies begin. Our enemies are already reinforcing. Well, Dungan is up and on his turn, we are going to use a slashing flourish with our ranged weapon to fire off two shots. Unfortunately, it looks like I have disadvantage on all of these and I'm not sure why, because we're in a pretty good, we're in a pretty good spot. They're not out of range or anything. Uh, perhaps my concentration should have been used on fairy fire or something. Uh, I'm going to fire off at the archer, 42% chance to hit, only 26 health remaining. We shoot our shot, one connects for 11 damage. With our bonus action, we're going to shoot again, that connects for 8 damage. Now, the main warrior moves towards Lazel and brings her down in a single blow and does the exact same thing to Astarian. In fact, Astarian's just plain dead. She then action surges and makes her way over towards our walkway. She's trying to get to us. Hold person has been cast on Dungan. However, it did work. He is being held. All right. We see our ogre comrades throw a rock at the archer. That, that rock was enough to take the target down. They are dead. We now see Blur being cast by Lump the Enlightened. That's gonna make him a little bit harder to hit as he moves forward towards uh, one of the two remaining melee combatants. Our weapon goes in for a swing, it does not connect. Our goopy little boy that's rolling around goes in for a swing and it does connect for six damage. Now we have a pretty big problem here, don't we? A big target is moving towards us very quickly. Will Command have any shot at working here? It looks like it might. Command Grovel might buy us a little bit of time. I think that's worth trying at the very least. Um, who's concentrating on the hold person? It's this dude here. He's got a few melee guys coming in on him, but if we don't break this concentration now, we are going to lose Dungan's turn and Dungan is our highest damage dealer. So let's fire off a Scorching Ray onto this guy. It's three attacks. The idea is we're gonna try to break his concentration with one of those. Unfortunately, that did not work. We're gonna see uh, Shadowheart begin to move a lot. And this person will be able to get in range of Dungan, so we're gonna cast Sanctuary on Dungan here to protect his health bar. Sanctuary is gonna make it so he cannot take damage, but when he attacks, that effect will go away. We see a bunch of damage coming out on Lump the Enlightened from the Archer here, who then walks into the Flaming Aura before Shadow stepping away. Dungan loses his turn to the whole person, but we see the Githyanki turn around with their intention back on the Ogres. Lump the Enlightened has been taken down in a single combo from the melee combatant. And now the other melee warrior moves in on the nearby Ogres. We see a slam coming out, but it does not connect with its target. 16 damage from that swing though, looks pretty good. This is a close fight, but I would say so far, it's a pretty even fight, believe it or not. Now, where did our hold person friend get off to? Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to catch up to him. So our two summoned creatures will try to strike at Sarth Beretha, easily the most intimidating of the Githyanki here. Uh, we do manage to deal eight damage. Eight damage is not a lot. Could Shadowheart simply help me out of the hold person? No, that doesn't look like it's the case. She has level one spell slots still sitting around. Let's see if we can make anything work with those. 
Oh, not too much we could do with that, to be honest. We could try to fairy fire to hit both of these guys. They're a little bit out of range. We may just have to eat a bad turn here, and that's okay. Not enough movement to hit our target here. What about this dude off on the side? Says not enough movement again. Um, I could dash just to get closer to this ladder with the intent of uh, potentially breaking it down. Maybe I could just do that right now. Wow, I can't even hit the ladder? You're telling me you don't have line of sight on these sticks? Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Uh, everything seems to be out of range of potential healing words on anyone that would use it. So I think, sadly, that's going to be my entire turn for Shadowheart. Although the Sanctuary did buy us enough time with Dungan to at least be able to live a little bit longer. Here comes the dash as we see another Misty Step happening, but a confusing turn as she just kind of does nothing. <laughs> Big hits coming out on the Ogres. They try to swing back, and so far, the concentration is still holding on to Dungan. Uh, that guy is getting kind of beat up, though. So this is still relatively okay. I am a little worried about the archer on the side, kind of getting to free cast at the moment without being threatened, but a good hit from the spiritual weapon into a hit by the flaming sphere, at least is chipping away on our main enemy at the moment. Uh, can I hit him now with anything? Looks like I have a chance of this firebolt connecting on the gish on the side. I'm gonna try to take it. 45% chance to hit, it does not connect. We now see a dash coming out from the archer as it looks like he's making his way to the high ground. The sanctuary is still uh, protecting our hold person target, but unfortunately, Dungan once again cannot move. That swing takes down the flaming sphere and the spiritual weapon as the main gift Yankee moves over towards the ogres who are already having a hard time. Another swing comes through dealing 10 damage. We finally see a critical hit and yes, it is broken. Dungan can cast again and just in time too. We are gonna try to hit sacred flame on the raider to our side. Sacred Flame hits for three damage, and we're then gonna see Shadowheart end her turn. The Archer here goes for a Roaring Thunder attack. She is going to try her Warding Flame to dodge it, but gets sent down to the middle of the arena and shot moments later. That won't do. Dungan goes for a flourishing attack onto the Archer next to him, 55% chance to hit. He goes for both shots. Only one connecting for 13. Let's go ahead and fire off our bonus attack too. That is a critical hit of 10. And I'm going to move away from the ledge now that I've seen what this guy can do. The main Githyanki down on the floor. Where is she going for? She skipped her turn just to turn around. The ogres move towards her and try to land some big stomps, but unfortunately only one of those attacks connects. We then see Shadowheart stand back up. She is going to drink the largest potion we have and then heal herself with her main action as well. I'm going to get her underneath where I think the archer can see me. She doesn't have too much more room, but most, most importantly, away from the Githyanki. The archer Githyanki turns around and focuses his sights onto Dungan, hits one attack for 12 damage, but now we fire back with another flourish. There we go, that's the damage we needed, 21. And our bonus action hits for 15. Dungan is back in charge of the high ground and moves to the sides to oversee the fight. One of the ogres does fall as the other just barely dodges that first swing. The second swing still hits for well over 20 damage. We are going to Sacred Flame. Our main attacker, that attack does not hit and I'm gonna use the rest of my movement to get away. Dungan is firing off his shots with disadvantage from up here. Uh, but we did get rid of a parry. So that means that the ogre theoretically could hit at full power here. She's gone invisible. I repeat, she has gone invisible. Detecting presence. Oh God. Oh, where do we think she is? She's gotta be in front of us. 
I don't think she's smart enough to move away. Can I not throw this? Oh, it's because it's not in her inventory. Here we go. I think she's right in front of the ogre. I'm trusting the fire here. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We are going to bonus action heal Dungan on the high ground. Oh, we have to move up there. That's okay. Can you move back down? Good. I like that more. I like that a lot more. Okay, and that's going to be Shadow Heart's turn. We don't have a flurry of blows anymore, but what I do have is a really shitty chance to hit from way up here. It's just because of her high defense. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to try the fairy fire then. It worked! We have concentration! And I'm now firing off a offhand swing from the high ground. She can take full damage here, but unfortunately, the ogre dies in front of us. An astral step to the high ground has been used. We are going to try to command Grovel. It's a 55% chance to work. We're going to try it. If it doesn't work, we are in trouble. Oh, uh, we are going to try heat metal. Is that my concentration? I think it's worth it. If it drops her, oh God, only a 35% chance. No, we keep the advantage and we got to just try. We got to try. Double attacks. She parries the first one, takes the second. And Dungan's going to move away. Shadow Heart's going to hold her ground. Shadow Heart is going to warding flare. It didn't matter. Oh my god, that's so much fucking damage. That is ridiculous. Oh my god, that's just absurd, absurd, absurd damage. Uh, if we upcast sleep, that hits 32 hit points. So here's what has to happen here. I need to move my full movement away from our target. We have Crusher's Ring, which gives us more movement speed per turn. Theoretically, we could outmaneuver her. Theoretically. I'm going to use my bonus action to heal myself up to full. And I'm going to, I guess, not shoot because I'm out of fucking range. That is so unfortunate. I'm going to... No movement for that either. Okay, I got to throw something. I got to throw something then. Uh, we'll take one of these bombs back and we'll just keep her on fire at least. My, my plan there was to move out of her range because theoretically she would have to dash to then follow me, which then gives me even more, you know, if she's, if she's dashing, she can't attack me. She's using that action. Uh, I'm throwing the fire. And that's it. Is she going to dash? She's second winding to heal. She's dashing. Okay, okay, okay. So she will get attack of opportunity here unless Thunder Wave can knock her off of the platform. Yes. Oh my God. She just took 36 damage and Dungan won the fight. <laughs> oh man. Did I need to take a risk that big going here with my honor mode save file? Where if I die, my entire fucking game gets deleted. No, I did not. But I did it for the likes. So make sure you thumbs up the video. Oh my god. When Lazel and Astarian walked in and died in a single turn, I was internally I was like, oh. I lost. <laughs> Woo! Woo! That was is it more is should I be using how much are these worth? Should I literally just be going back and getting uh getting Papa to do this for me? I think that's what I'm gonna do. Fate, dost thou require a new ally? Or mayhaps thou mayest. I want you to watch over Shadowheart. As thou wish. <gasps> wait, what does that mean? She's just here? Wait, wait, no, don't you resurrect them? <laughs> oh god. Dost thou require a new I'd like to collect one of my oh, fallen companions. Give Shadowheart back to me. Balance. 
Okay, so it's exactly the same as paying uh, resurrection gold for this. Except she's not alive yet. Are you doing this, Papa? Are you just casting the spell? Sorry, I'm not very patient. Thank you. Shadowheart, you're back. Okay, nothing corny or cheesy. She's not getting spell slots back or anything. Okay, that's just an alternative way to res. So not something we want to do all the time, but that was a very big risk. And in a lot of ways, this is considered the hardest fight of the act as well. So we did a lot here. We should be really proud of ourselves for that victory. I give Yankee slate. Give it here. <clears throat> Tears through markings. Could this be? Magical energy courses through the slate, then to Lazelle. Your own body buzzes in resonance. A diagram glows before you. Its meaning is beyond your comprehension. It is a map. A Githyanki creche lies within an ancient temple at the mountain pass. Hurry forth. Purification is at hand. Nice, dude. Nice. With haste. Well, I'm going to loot all these guys and then... Oh, man, I'm already over encumbered. I'm going to loot all these guys, then loot everyone over at Wacom's Rest. And then we'll meet back up. Bro, seriously? Thinking about it? We were one auto attack away from losing our campaign right there. Oh, man. Hey, that just goes to show, though, when it was time to step up, Dungan was ready. He stepped up, bro. I'm keeping my promise, man. I am looting so much food in this run. <laughs> I get that create water is a spell. And uh, don't get me wrong, it has its applications where it could be really strong in, in this game too. I get that it's a spell because of balance in the tabletop game. If it was a cantrip, you would just be like, I create water over and over and over again. You'd fill a room with water and that's how you would solve every problem. But it would be nice if it was a cantrip in this game and then I just put fire out as I go and put fire out. Because even when I'm telling my, my units to walk around the fire, Someone always ends up taking a little bit of burning damage, a little bit of tick damage. Just a thought. Love you, Larian. Well, before we get in any more trouble today, I'm just going to make sure that we get some of those spell slots back. There is one more very difficult fight on the high road. And well, we already beat one. We might as well try our luck again. You don't sleep well. Flitting oh no! Nightmares. Maybe you wake up because you know something is wrong, or maybe you just get lucky. Hey, are those new piercings? No, no, it's not what it looks like. I swear. It, what I, does it look like? I wasn't going to hurt you. I, I just needed. Well blood there in the dim firelight you see him for what he really is a vampire a slave to sanguine hunger <laughs> put a steak in the monster that's our first reaction i gotta be honest if this was real life that's absolutely what i would do i hate vampires I'm legitimately afraid of them. Even as a grown adult, I've been afraid of them my whole fucking life. Harley's making me watch. God, what's that show? Oh, God. True Blood. Harley's making me watch True Blood. The show about fucking vampires in Louisiana. It's one of her favorite shows. I got a really big bias against this guy right now. More so than normal. How long has it been since you killed someone? Tell me the truth. I know what you are. I've never killed anyone. Well, not for food. I feed on animals, boars, deer, kobolds, whatever I can get. But it's not enough. Not if I have to fight. I feel so weak. If I just had a little blood, 
I could think clearer. Fight better. Please. Legitimately, we are going into something really hard. Courses through you, and your companion's mind unfolds, secrets half revealed. Push into his mind, search for the truth. I don't care if he likes it or not. He was about to feed on me. <laughs> we were all the seven. We only needed a two. Let's see what we can find crawling around in there. What shadows do you have? What's this? What's happening? A shadow swims across your vision, and a familiar voice tells you to be calm. You are loved. His mind opens up, revealing cracked and quivering memories. At their heart, you see dark eyes commanding you to feed. You open your mouth and bite down, not into a tender neck, but into the twisting body of a rat, the only thing your master lets you eat. You ate animals because you were forced to, not because you wanted to. No, I actually think that's, you know, better that they were, you know, if we know a lot about the vampire situation in Baldur's Gate after playing through the game. Could you imagine if all those vampires were actually kidnapping people and eating them? They're, they'd overrun the town in like two days. Why didn't you tell me you were a vampire? At best, I was sure you'd say no. More likely, you'd ram a stake through my ribs. That was one of the options. Mm. I needed you to trust me. And you can trust me. He says right after trying to... You tried to bite me! Exactly! Exactly! Because we don't have a choice. Not if we're going to save ourselves from these worms. I need you alive. You need me strong. Please, only be a taste, I swear. I'll be well, you'll be fine. And everything can go back to normal. All right. Only because we're traveling the high road right now, and I've heard rumors, and I need you strong. But you go too far, and I got a stake right here. Ah, oh, of course. I shall be gentle as a babe. Let's make ourselves comfortable, shall we? Oh, God. Ah! <laughs> a, of ice ah! your neck, a quick, sharp pain that fades to throbbing numbness. Your breath catches, your pulse quickens. Okay. Grab a steak and drive it into his heart. I guess I'm letting him continue, right? You lean into him. No, I don't. Yourself. You can feel your blood racing, coursing through both your bodies. A gentle, numb feeling starts to spread. Okay, that would freak me out. That would freak me out. I'm going to say stop. That's too much. And we're very persuasive. That's a 15? 15? Okay, yeah, we got that all day. Oh, my God. If I died right here, I'd have to kick him out of the party. Uh, uh, of course. I was just swept up in the moment. I'm about to sweep you out with the trash if you do that again. <laughs> but it worked. I feel good. Strong. Happy. His guard's down! Stab him in the heart! <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing you fight, and that is true. Shouldn't take long. So many people need killing. Now, if you'll excuse me, you're invigorating, but I need something more filling. Even after that, he still goes out this and he still hunts want. animals. I won't forget it. You're damn straight he it was a gift. He stalks towards the forest, stronger, more confident, ready to hunt. What happened to elves sitting up in bed? Astarian's still doing the meditating fingers because elves don't sleep, but he used to sit up and, you know, kind of meditate like I see a monk meditating. I wonder why they stopped doing that. Well, what happened to me? Oh, negative one to attack rolls, saving throws, and ability checks. That's really bad. I need my attack rolls. I'm kind of the damage dealer for the party. 
Oh, God, and look at Dungan, too. You can tell he doesn't feel well. Well, I'm going to have to come up with another way of getting the next fight done, I think. There's always another way. Let's leave camp together. We were just outside of the Toll House here. Uh, this is the area that the Knolls were being created in and going out and attacking stuff. Same area. We're just slightly to the east of it. That's the bridge we hopped over from uh, the Goblin area from before. Those Knolls might be nearby. Yep. Careful. They might be nearby. And if we get on their bad side, we are in trouble. Uh, before we head inside, there's a waypoint. Yeah, it's right here. I'm just going to grab it. Uh, blood all the way up to the stairs. I guess I didn't realize just how many bodies really are here. Nothing need to worry about. Hey, guys. Things, friend. You're welcome to rest here. Oh, that's nice. Who, who's there? Please keep your distance. You're welcome to shelter here, but we've grave injuries to tend to. Uh, rest easy. I'm only staying a short time. Tear protects you. Be on your watch. There's a devil in the guise of a one-horned tiefling haunting the Risen Road. She slaughtered countless refugees fleeing the Absolute. Yesterday, she butchered an entire family without mercy. Oh my god. We were lucky to survive our encounter with It her. sounds like it. Oh, religion check failed, and that's one of the things I'm good at. <laughs> well, let me help. I can hunt down this monster. She ran toward the river when she saw we were merely wounded, not dead. Down the hill from here. She must pay for her crimes. If you capture her, you will have served Tyr where we could not. This is the sword of justice, blessed by Tyr. I've wielded it since I swore my oath. It's all I have, but it's yours if you stop her. Bring me her head, and Tyr will consider her crimes repaid. Mm, very well, I'll bring you her head. May the just God guide you. Well, we didn't pick up on anything out of the ordinary there, other than a camera clipping through the wall. There is another target in this room, so he's level 5. He has a level 4 with him. Is there anyone else in the building? A traitor! Hey, I just looted a lot of stuff. Supplies? We have fewer mouths to feed now. Yeah, I have a couple supplies. Let's do it. Ah, so some items are starting to show up on vendors that I'm very interested in. 23 gold gets me the Arrow of Lightning. Uh, 46 gold, that one's a little more expensive. Gives me anti-heal and necrotic damage arrows. And then a good old fire arrow, 23 gold. Roaring thunder, that's 46. We could just get regular old acid arrows too. These have a bit of an AOE with them, just like the fire ones do. So I'm gonna start picking these up whenever we can. Merchants should have a healthy supply of them. My main issue is going to be remembering to use them while we're out maneuvering around on the countryside and not just saving them all for a rainy day at the end of the game. Well, these guys were telling us about a demon who is just down the hill here. In fact, you can see piles of blood piling up from that altercation they were probably speaking of. Or maybe she's just bleeding out and running this way. She's running a little hot. There you are. Good. I know what you did. All those people in the Druid's Grove. You slaughtered them to a man. Did it make you feel important, huh? Did it make you feel big? Oh. <laughs> Carlac is not a fan of our actions. Who are you? The last person you're ever going to meet. Karlak's my name. I've got a knack for killing demons and devils, and I think I've found my next target. Uh, if you value your life, you'll stand down. Oh my god. Uh, listen, you've got the wrong idea about me. I didn't have anything to do with what happened to those people, so we could lie to her and try to de-escalate? I wonder 
if I can make her stand down. I mean, we could still get the contract if we need to, but let's see. I'll even cast friends. Why not? Oh, we didn't even need it. That's a natty 20. We intimidated her in this situation where she's already burning with rage. Uh, I've got enough to worry about without your screams giving my position away. Get the fuck out of here now before I change my mind. Oh, and that's just the end of the conversation. Pretty sure I told you to fuck off, mate. <laughs> it seems the Githyanki are keen to reclaim the artifact I carry. I can't afford that to happen. In fact, none of us can. That thing is shaking yeah. us somehow. I don't want to know what happens if we lose it. Are you just having this conversation in front of Korlek? Uh, Car why? Why are you having this conversation right now? The artifact is shielding us, but ultimately you wish to give it away. Something has to give. Exactly. A problem for another time. Hopefully, we'll no longer be in need of protection by the time my mission draws to an end. Yeah, thanks for talking to me. So, is she gonna tell me to fuck off again? Friends is ending. She's gonna know that I charmed her. I'm so curious to see if anything happens. Pretty sure I told you. No, nothing happens. In the description for that ability, it's always like, on higher difficulties, they'll know. But I've never seen a bad thing happen once. Well, I'm here to collect my bounty. <laughs> you sort of fight. <laughs> And now you have one. Let's be honest. She was going to fight us anyway. Let's let's be honest. A lot of things were going to happen to Carlac regardless of what we do here anyway. Uh, she is pretty far away from us. We're going to put our warrior in between her and I. And then I don't have any more actions on Dungan for us to worry about. So we're just going to kind of hold the bridge here. We'll see what Carlac does. She drank a potion. I could have had that in my inventory. She pulls out the crossbow instead of moving in with that sword of hers to fire a shot on Shadowheart. We're going to try the Sacred Flame. It does not connect. Lazal moves up and uses the Sorrowful Lash in an attempt to move Carlac towards us. But ultimately, it did not work. Good swing there as Dungan fires off two shots into her chest, one of them connecting for eight damage. Now, Astarian. Oh, 32 damage on the critical hit. Target acquired. Done. Let's just go ahead and bring that with us. Oh, God. Clings to the corpse like the memory of a storm. Remove her head. I like the whole party shot there. Everybody grouped together. Oh, man. Originally, I wanted to have Carlac in this party. In fact, she was going to have a... Comes free with a sickening crunt. She was going to have the build I'm planning for Astarian. Oh! But she doesn't jive with the Absolute. If you go down that path, she leaves the party. So, unfortunately, this was inevitable. Hey, that potion she used still shows up in her bag. I'm going to take all that with me. And then, uh... I was going to throw the body into the river, but I guess I'm too weak to do that. <laughs> hey, Anders. Well. Can I just throw it on the table? Here's her head, just like you asked. Brutal, dude. That's brutal. Thank you. As promised, here is my blade. Blessed by tear. It's sacred. The most valuable thing I've ever held. I hope it serves you as well as it served me. Sick, dude. Thanks for giving that to me. I noticed that you don't have a weapon now. That Sword of Justice is actually pretty good. I do think it is comparable, at least, to the demon one that we got from the Nautiloid. Although it doesn't have the fiery bonus added to it. I think I'm going to keep the one we're using for now. I could still fight these guys, and I wasn't lying when I say this guy is one of the hardest fights in the act. But he did kind of already give us our weapon, and we know this vendor in here sells arrows. So I'll be back. Thanks, bud. Thanks for your business. Appreciate you.
Well, that's going to do it for this episode, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. The high road has been tamed, and some of the hardest fights are behind us. And we lived to tell the tale. Next time, we're going into the Underdark. A lot of our best in slot items are in here, and I cannot wait to have them. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you again.